Hello and welcome to another Rightly Witterings with me, Michael Jex, the tea drinking author, who's now finished it. Hey ho. I was asked last week about English notebook manufacturers. Um, the reason was some time ago I put out some videos with a little company, and it was very little, I think it was just one man living at home in well, I found him because this lovely spiral-bound notebook leapt out of um, a shelf at me when I was in New York doing a book signing. And I found this rather lovely creamy paper and I tried it with one of my fountain pens and it was superb, absolutely superb. So I thought, oh, I've got to buy that. So I bought it and I came back home and when I started getting low on it, the dog has just pushed the door wide open as she's coming in. Good girl. <laughs> she looks very miserable, poking her head round the door, wondering why she isn't in here already. Anyway, so I found this thing, bought it, brought it home, and when I started running out, I thought, I'll contact the manufacturer and find out where I can buy some more. And to my surprise, the telephone number looked rather familiar. And when I actually contacted the people, it was familiar because it was only about eight miles away from where I live here in England. So I had to go all the way to the States to find it. But it was good. Trouble is, they've stopped making those notebooks. I think the man who used to make them uh, has probably no more and neither are the notebooks. So when I mentioned this, I said how sad it was and someone contacted me last week and said, can you, can you recommend any other English notebook manufacturers? And I thought, well, actually, I'm not sure I can. And then I started thinking, of course, many, many years ago, I used to use these quite a lot. They're basically a school book. They had nice fat lines, easy to write on, but although they're excellent with things like pencil I thought would they work with fountain pens and to my considerable surprise they worked really well so absolutely no feathering it looks like there's a lot of shadowing here in this light on this camera but in reality looking at it there's very little impact at all there's a little bit of ghosting coming through at the very bottom there but this was a dirt cheap notebook. In fact, it cost 47 pence when I bought it. And you can see how old it is from the fact that it's before the days of calculators and the internet. Now for you youngsters who have been born in the last 40 odd years, we didn't used to have calculators. We didn't used to have telephones. And so having little conversion like boxes and so on, was really useful back in the day. But they're not the only people. And they also have moved on rather. So nowadays you can get this kind of notebook from them. Now they've started making Sylvine in the bright red again. It was a brand that disappeared for many years, but they're back and they're back with a vengeance and they've got things like this which gives you the ability to write again with fountain pens and it works really well. KWZ Honey in the Conway Stewart Drake. Mm. Very nice pen, very nice nib. It's one of the wettest pens I've got. The Conway Stewart Drake with the broad nib is about as wet as you can get. It's very similar to a Visconti Homo sapiens with a broad nib. Gorgeous pens, both of them. So that's two brands. And it's nice to know you can get 100% recycled paper, which will work well with fountain pens. There's also firms like Oxford. This paper is, I have to admit, absolutely glorious. It is very smooth. It's rather like Rhodia or Clairefontaine. 
but good quality Clairefontaine. It really has got a lovely, it almost feels like it's been polished. And with this, again, absolutely no bleed through, no problem at all. And it comes with a clever little app that you can use, which will um, help you to take photographs of whatever you've written and transfer it to your computer. Uh, never bothered with that because as far as I'm concerned if I've got it in an, a notebook I don't need to look at it in a computer but I was thinking about these things and then I started thinking well yes there's also those wonderful people at C White who make these rather glorious um, sketchbooks for artists and when you look at all these different types of company and paper if you do a Google search and try to find out about different types of paper and different types of notebook, then you might come across this firm. And the Stamford Notebook Company have very kindly sent me this. But they've also sent me this which I am inordinately grateful to them for because when I opened this up beautifully packaged as you can see there is this glorious sketchbook they call it a notebook but I am assured by them that this is a sketchbook and it has really lovely paper now, I haven't used this yet. I'm going to probably this afternoon, but it's glorious. Really nice fabric bound notebook. It's got the one uh, ribbon as a bookmark. That's fine. It opens up really well, opens flat, even in the middle. It is individually stitched each of the different sections, I believe. And it looks robust. It looks glorious, I think. Um, so I am really looking forward to giving that a good test. I don't know exactly what the paper weight is or anything, but I will be in contact with Stamford and I will be able to tell you. Now, paper samples, let's have a look and see what's in here. And I haven't opened this before. This is this is an un enveloping or something. So let's see what's in here. They have given me a whole bunch of sheets of paper as samples. That's really nice. That's good of them actually. I like that. So we've got here XMF ruled and dot pages sheet one black. So that specifies the type of paper. Rather a nice, I don't know if it's going to show too well on this camera, but it's a cream colour, which I like. White is fine, but it can get a little tedious. So here we've got some squared paper, lined squared, and here, oddly enough, dot grid. All of them the same, really rather lovely. cream colouring. Now, what can I do? I know, let's try, let's try writing with a fountain pen on it.
I haven't looked at these yet to see how they've gone. So let's have a dog has just materialised underneath my desk. Thank you, little pup. So, as you can see, absolutely no feathering, no misbehaviour whatsoever with a 1.1 mil stub or with the little pilot pen. So that's all good. I tried a bit of shading with the 1.1 mil Twisby here. That's all good. And then I went on to my wettest writer. Again, no feathering, no misbehaviour whatsoever. And Conway Stewart Onyx Black, I think, is one of those that's going to be a little bit on the unkind side for most papers. Now, just as a comparison, I also used it on some of the Sylvine recycled paper and I am very impressed with that, especially as recycled paper. It's not often you get that sort of good behaviour. But that's one side. Let's just have a look at the other. Now, with the recycled paper, you can see there, I think, quite clearly that here, 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 there is bleed through, which is what I would expect. Onyx Black is pretty violent ink. So let's have a look at these pages individually. So with the nice simple stuff, when I turn it round, I can see no mark whatsoever coming through. Absolutely nothing. So that's cross black and a 1.1 millimeter stub with some dominant industry ink. Good, but I would expect that not to show to and not to show much through. Now, when I did a bit of shading, there is a bit a bit coming through. But let's be realistic. That's putting down a lot of ink and actually I scraped away the top surface of the area with the nib because I was rubbing so hard. So I think that's not a negative. I think that's just a little bit of unfortunate maltreatment of decent paper by me. And then let's have a look at this. And when I hold it open and look at the other side, there really is nothing coming through. And I'm going to do one last thing now. I'm going to take my Drake. This is my Conway Stewart Drake. It is still one of my favourite pens of all time. It is solid silver. It is enormously heavy. And it feels wonderful in the hand. The main thing about it for me is that it takes no pressure at all. Just the weight of the pen guarantees that you'll get good ink flow. Now, I'm just going to do a bit more shading here but using this nib which is so much smoother than the Twisby stainless steel nib this is a good gold nib and it just feels wonderful in the hand when you're using it so as you can see onyx black and when I open it out, yes, I can see a tiny spot and a slight amount of bleed through, but it's tiny. And for that amount of ink from a nib like that, that means I think that this paper from those very nice people at Stamford, I think they get a pure five-star thumbs up. Thank you very much to Stamford for sending these samples through. Very interesting always when you get different types of paper to look at. That is really impressive. And so...
so is that, and I'm very grateful to them for this. But if all their notebooks are constructed with paper like that, into notebooks like that, I think you can't possibly go wrong. And I must admit, looking at this, it would make an ideal travel journal, I think. It's very... It's slightly smoother paper than I'm used to with my watercolour sketching. And I think that would make it absolutely perfect for writing on with a fountain pen as well. But I'm not going to do that today because I'm going to review this properly later when I've had a chance to do some watercolour painting and I will talk about it, watercolouring, and if I can, I'm going to take it with me when I go somewhere. I don't know where yet. And I can review it properly with watercolours and use it as a travel journal. I think that makes sense. I think that sounds like a good idea. So I'm going to do that. Now, thank you very much for watching. I hope that was interesting. I haven't got any videos of the dogs today, but what I can do is show you a picture that I was commissioned to paint by some friends recently. And I'll show you the original view of the photo that I took, followed by the picture. That sounds fair to me. And apart from that, if you've got any questions, do please put them in the comments below because I always try to answer them as quickly as possible. And in the meantime, what else can I say? Hit the like button and subscribe and all those good things and that way it keeps this video channel going. But um, if you don't want to do that, thanks anyway for watching through to now and I'll speak to you soon. Take care. Cheers.